In this video I'm going to show you how I set up my receiver. And if you follow me through, by the end of this video, you could end up with more signal and less noise. Hello once again and thank you for joining me on the Waters and Stanton video channel. I want to talk about the way that you operate your receiver or perhaps the way that you should operate your receiver because you know your receiver in your transceiver is a very powerful tool it's high performance if you've got a recent transceiver it's probably SDR or partly SDR SDR basically um, is replacing uh, individual components with software in other words your radio is software designed what does that do well it means to say that you can do all sorts of wonderful things um, it makes filtering sharper etc um, it helps to reduce the internal noise of the receiver and so forth and so uh, altogether uh, the modern receiver has got a lot of capabilities but it's also very easy to operate it in the incorrect way and if you don't operate the receiver properly you won't get the best out of it you won't get the best results and so what i'm going to do is just to get, go through the basic concept of setting up a receiver um, i'm going to use the um, the yesu ftx1 optima as a demo but basically the same the same principles apply to whatever um, transceiver you've got. So where do we start? Well we start at the front end. That's the first port of call in order to adjust your receiver. We start at the front end. Now I suggest that if you follow this through that you either use the 40 meter or the 20 meter band because there's always a lot of signals on there and most people have got an antenna which will work reasonably well on one of those bands. So tune your receiver or transceiver to either 40 meters or to 20 meters and uh, I suggest you use SSB because that's the mode that uh, is the most common mode at the moment. Now the first thing you need to do is to make sure that you haven't got the preamp on. All modern transceivers have got a preamp. You don't need a preamp on 40 meters or 20 meters and although you'll find that the S-meter reading goes down. Ignore the S-meter reading. We're worried about getting the best out of your receiver. So check to see if the preamp's on, turn it off. You shouldn't need a preamp on either of those bands unless you've got a very, very short antenna. That's the first thing. Because what you, what you don't want, you, you don't want this receiver amplifying signals unnecessarily because bear in mind that a receiver, the, the antenna when connected to a receiver, is receiving everything throughout the spectrum. It's receiving the whole radio spectrum. It's got to sort all that out. There's some clever inside filtering that will take care of that. But you don't want to degrade a performance to begin with by amplifying what is not necessary. So make sure that that preamp is turned off. Now the next thing we're going to look at is the attenuator. Almost all transceivers have got an attenuator you can switch in. The attenuator reduces the strength of signals. You're going to get some strong signals on 40 and 20 meters. So find out where the attenuator is. It may be a single step attenuator. It may be two or three steps. Select that attenuator. Put some attenuation in. It will probably be 6 dB or 9 or 12 dB. Put some attenuation and see what happens. Yes, I know the S-meter goes down, but we're not worried about the S-meter. And then once it's settled, what happens? Well, you'll probably find you can still hear all the signals okay. And what you will notice is you get a little bit less background noise. Next, check the AGC. For single sideband, you want the AGC to be slow. That's the automatic gain control. You've probably got a menu item that covers that. Make sure that's slow because that will also help to reduce the background noise. After that, what you need to do is to look 
for the RF gain control. Now I say look for the RF gain control because on some of the modern transceivers the RF gain control is not a separate control. Um, it toggles between audio gain and RF gain. The more expensive transceivers tend to have a separate RF gain control. Now try reducing that RF gain control. Listen to a fairly strong SSB signal. Reduce that RF gain control. You'll probably find that what actually happens is that the audio level only goes down a small amount, but the background noise goes down more. So we've already done three things. We've switched the preamp off, we've put an attenuator in, and we're now using the RF gain control as a means of RF gain. You don't want too much RF gain. Too much RF gain just puts pressure on the transceiver. It brings up the noise. So, yeah, well, we're making progress, aren't we? Now you're probably thinking the next move is the DSP noise reduction. No, it's not. There's something else we can do before we worry about any noise reduction facilities in the transceiver. We are going to look at the passband, what we, make, we commonly call the IF passband. It's probably not quite right now for SDR, but anyway, we're going to look at the passband because the passband is another way of reducing noise. You know, it's, it's commonly known that the narrower the filter, the less noise. You get a better signal to noise ratio. So we're going to look at the bandwidth of the transceiver. Now you'll have to find out where the control is. Uh, look at the manual if necessary. That's if you read the manual. Um, but uh, I tend to download my manuals onto the iPad. So find out where you set the bandwidth. Now, Typical bandwidth for SSB is 2.8 kilohertz. That's a sort of popular band pass. But you can actually reduce that. You can reduce it to about 2.6, 2.5, even 2.4. If you reduce it, you actually improve the signal to noise ratio. In other words, the ratio between the signal you're trying to listen to and all the other crud that's coming through. Now, once you've done that, then look for the shift control the IF shift control. That actually moves the passband around. And very often you'll find that if you move it in one direction, you'll find, well, <laughs> if you move it in the right direction, you'll find that you reduce the HF passband. In other words, you pass less HF, and because HF tends to be the predominant noise. The, the predominant noise tends to be on the HF side of the signal. So. If you reduce the passband or move the passband such that you start to lose the higher frequencies, you'll also find that you reduce the noise. So with these two controls, the bandwidth and the IF shift, we can actually tailor the pass band such that it predominantly passes the signal that you want to listen to, and it starts to reject even more the noise. More progress. So where are we going next? No, we're not going to the DSP noise reduction yet. We've got one more port of call. Most modern transceivers have got what I suppose in old-fashioned terms would be treble and bass controls. Very often there's three levels, maybe more actually, three layers of control that you can adjust in your receiver. So it would be low, mid and high. You can adjust those responses to suit your ears. Nobody else's ears, your ears. Because as you get older, and I know that for a fact, as you get older, there's certain frequencies that need to be boosted in order for things to sound right. So go into the menu, find out where the menu item is. It means to say you might have to look at the manual again, but find out where that item is and just listen to what happens when you tweak those controls. You may well find that you end up with a nicer sounding signal. 
Yes, finally, we've got to the DSP, the noise reduction circuit, which is common on most transceivers now. Although, if you've got an older, older transceiver, don't forget that um, uh, Graham Som Somerville, the uh, BHI, does some excellent noise reduction uh, modules that uh, you can connect to your older transceiver if it doesn't have one. Principle is very much the same. So, if we select the noise reduction circuit, we can adjust the level. And I'm going to just show you here on the uh, Optima uh, how I adjusted the uh, noise reduction to have an effect on the signal. Basically, there's usually a bit of a pause. You, you adjust the level, which I think on the Optima is 1 to 10. You adjust the level and there's a slight time lag before it sort of bites in and it analyzes the signal and reduces the noise. It makes a very good job of doing it. What you can't do with noise reduction circuits, at least all the ones I've found, you can't uncover signals that aren't there. In other words, the noise reduction circuit does need to be given a chance. As long as the signal can be heard, even though it's very noisy, provide the signal can be heard and there's a lot of noise, then it will strip that noise away quite well. If the noise completely covers the signal, then the noise reduction circuit won't really help. It's good, just got to have a little hint of a signal in order to separate the signal that you want to listen to and the noise that you don't want to listen to. The um, 7610. Anyway, I wish you well. Take care. Take care. Be well. And um, hi. Not too late to wish you a very happy and a healthy new year. And till the next time. G0TPZ. G4GPS. Best thing to do is to make yourself a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and uh, just have a play around with the receiver section of your transceiver. I think you'll be quite surprised at what improvements you can actually make. And it's best to do this when you're not really interested in working, you've just got a bit of spare time, you want to play around with the transceiver, give it a go, make a few notes, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. There we are. As usual, thank you for your support on this channel, it's much appreciated, thank you for your support at the shop, and don't forget to check our website, we've got lots of uh, offers on, we've got bundle deals that um, you can see there, just uh, key in the word bundle, in the uh, search bar and you'll see all the bundle deals we've got and also thank you for support on this uh, youtube channel don't forget to press the subscribe button in the meantime you enjoy your ham radio you take care look forward to seeing you as usual in the next video mm -hmm.